What I want to suggest to you is that you need to begin to create a purposefulness about your relationships that will allow and fuel your success. And purposefulness, by the way, does not mean fake. It just means it's damn important. So let's start managing it. Let's start focusing on it. Just because you decide something important and you're going to write down the 25 most important people to the growth of your business, the 25 most important people to the growth of your business, and those individuals are people you're going to proactively reach out to and begin to build deeper relationships with and assign a cadence of outreach to the 25 most important people and recognize that there are five critical individuals who are more important than anybody else to the growth of your business, and you're going to say to yourself, I'm going to talk to them, what, once a week, once a day? I'm going to make sure that I take them out to dinner or try to get them out to dinner once a month, once a quarter. I'm going to make sure that I do something, I'm, I'm thoughtful for a moment, I do something generous for them once a week, once a month, right? And I really think about how I add value to them beyond just selling them my product or, or being their boss because some of those five most important people could be the most important individual you've got inside of your organization, right? So what I was basically showing is that in the olden days, this stuff used to happen organically in business and it started to strip away with all of the pressures of society. Taylorism, you know, didn't necessarily pay attention to this people stuff, the Tayloristic business environment, but it happened because you fermented with each other in cubicles over a period of time. Spin ahead and it ain't happening anymore. Okay, we got two books that are available to you for for additional resources. My first book was called Never Eat Alone. And it really is sort of our generation's version of Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. And it teaches you how to begin to build external relationships. If you've got sales folks, get them Never Eat Alone. These are the, this, or if you've got a kid in their 20s, get them Never Eat Alone. Anybody in this room read Never Eat Alone? Raise your hands if you have a few, a couple of you. Um, it's, it's the book that will really teach you in a very tactical, systematic way, how to begin to think differently about relationships, elevate its criticality and importance, and motivate you to build them better and different. Right? Like I said, for me, my book when I was growing up was Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People, similar, similar practice to that. Then what we realized was the number one predictor of you building relationships and capable of building those kind of relationships boiled down to the inner circle around you. It actually boiled down to the two or three people. So do you have two or three people in your life that won't let you fail? Do you have two or three people in your life that give a damn about you and you give a damn about them so much that we call those lifeline relationships? What we found was individuals who have extraordinary success in their life, extraordinary success in their life, inevitably can point to three people who have their back. And they have theirs. Now, when that is your executive team, watch out. But I work with a lot of, have everybody heard of YPO, Young President's Organization? It's, a, it's, a very, it's one of those, or EO, Entrepreneur's Organization, etc. cetera. It's a peer-to-peer it's a, it's a -peer support group, which one of the reasons I, I love the work that John's doing in the organization is, is that Ingram has decided to take the model of small peer-to-peer -peer support and offer that to you in different ways. And to organize allow you to organize with each other. You have an event like this, and it's not about how much you're getting out of the front of the room. It should be about who you're bonding with out there, so that when you leave here, you can pick up the phone, find three people that you connected with here, and commit to each other here at this conference. You know what, between now and next year, we're gonna call each other every month and kick each other's butts and make sure that we're doing the stuff that we need to do to be successful where you can sit at lunch this afternoon and do a quick gap analysis that says, what's stopping me from growing? What are the things that I'm doing as a leader that's holding me back? What are the things that, that I should be doing? What are the technical, the hard skills? What are the soft skills? Well, how am I managing my people? Who do I have on board? Who are the individuals that I need to bring on board in order to really propel my growth and stop staying stuck where I am, feeling like I'm spinning my wheels, working too hard, and not getting enough out of it, right? And what are the two or three things I'm going to commit to do when I leave here? And, and then admit those to somebody here in the room, and the two of you or three of you or four of you agree that you're going to do a conference call going forward on a monthly basis or a physical meeting if you happen to be co-located and say, we're not going to let each other fail. 
Well, that's what YPO does, that's what EO does, et cetera, and that's what Ingram has tried to create systems to support for you. But what I'm telling you is if you don't have one of those groups, the likelihood that you will steep and stay in your own mediocrity is high. Because if you keep doing what you've done, you're going to get what you got.